stock update on the S&P 500 specifically and some of the underlying stocks, not financial advice, but hopefully you've been watching and things have been going pretty close to the way we've been seeing them. Although I haven't been able to say uh, definitively one way or the other, I did say I was leaning just a tad bit to the positive and that's exactly where we went. And that was really based off of, um, I had said that you know there were these highs and so you could see this line we drew from this high and you know if we broke that high uh, that was a really good sign and we did we broke that high uh, yesterday and then today which is uh, Wednesday I believe <laughs> it's hard to keep track of the day sometimes um, we hit this other high now this other high or uh, resistance I should call it it's not exactly a high yet and let me get to that in a second you can see that there was kind of this line that you could draw touching some of the points here not, I didn't write, draw it maybe so precisely, but it's just a little bit different, a little bit longer than this line. Similar idea, I suppose. And we had kind of seen this triangle, this expanding triangle kind of happening, and you saw these channels um, occurring throughout the whole way. And so right now, I was a little bit more positive uh, earlier in the day because we kind of shot up broke through this line and I thought wow that's pretty good and then it was resistance and throughout the day I just wasn't so nervous because we had a lot of time to break this resistance and then this line would become support which is good and then after that you know we'd have to break above over here which is 392 and then finally the you know the piece de resistance would be 394 this high this all-time high i suppose of the market and once we break that that's going to be pretty good because we've tried it looks like to other people we've tried many times to break it and we can't well that's because we were just forming this kind of triangle and in fact um it might the triangle top might be somewhere around this 392 level so you know there is still a little bit more resistance once we break through this part right here Really, the biggest resistance, I think, uh, as of now, will be this 394. If we can break that 394, then I think it's, I wouldn't say a shoe in but it's way more likely to hit our 403 uh, target. Right now, I'm a little bit nervous. Why? Well, look what happened at the end of the day. We kind of broke out of this channel. Now, the one nice thing is we didn't quite break out. We just kind of traded sideways out of it. So tomorrow will be a really important day. Now, sadly, we ended below this line. Ha, huh, could you imagine that? It would have been a lot nicer if we ended above the line. Um, the fact that we ended below it or maybe just around it, you know, because this line is maybe not so precisely drawn, uh, to me, gives me a little bit of pause. We're out of the channel. We're at this key line right here. We're still going to have some head, uh, some room to move to hit at 394. And right now, that's kind of the way I'm leaning. I'm wondering if we'll have a very similar look what happened yesterday and the day before. We kind of had a great start to the day, and then near the end of the day, it came down. And then the next day, same thing. We had a great start to the day, plateaued and came down. And it was a very similar thing here, you know, maybe a little bit less so. So is it running out of steam? I'm not sure. But there's a part of me that wonders... Are, are we going to have the kind of exact same scenario where we come up, get to that 394, maybe we'll come up quickly, people are excited. You can already see the post market, though I don't put too much weight on that, is already at 390, you know, it's a, a point and a half over, so if we put on the extended hours, uh, you can see that it's moving up um, from the end of the day. Okay, I don't put too much stock into that. Nevertheless, it's very possible that we kind of come up and hit the 394. I assume it's going to be resistance. It might even be resistance at this peak already at 392. Not sure. So we'll reach 392, uh, hit resistance, bump its head, come down. Maybe it'll still hit 394. But then will we end tomorrow in a similar fashion where maybe we come back down on this line or something like that or some other support line the 392 line, if we break 392, do we come back, do we go up to 394, come and rest on 392, kind of similar day as, as that day? Or is there the option that we kind of have such a good start to the day, we get back in this channel, and once we're in this channel, we can actually have a lot of room to move in a day or so. So those are the both bullish options, okay? Now the bearish option, which you're not going to want to hear, is... We've already been in this channel for, you know, uh, quite a few days. 
well, it's a little bit hard over here to tell. Is this really, does this really count or not? It's almost like a changing of the guard. But, you know, one day, two days, three days. And this was our fourth day in the channel. And similarly over here, you know, you had one day, two day, three days. And fourth day was, you know, just kind of changing the guard. I don't know how you're going to see this as a down day or half a day. I'm not sure exactly. But so if we're kind of mimicking the other channels like we have been because of the triangle nature of the thing, well, we might be pushing our luck at this point. And so that's why the bearish kind of perspective is, yeah, even if we do move up a little bit tomorrow, even if we do, but especially if we don't, but even if we do, well, if we're going to continue this triangle, then we're looking at 369 going down. Uh, that's quite a ways down, and that could be pretty fast, um, just because of you see how, you know, these channels at least as well maybe they're not getting more aggressive some of them are more aggressive some of them less so i'm not sure but we could move pretty fast in a day or two give up you know everything that we got in the past few days and struggled to get and uh, come back down to 369 which will probably be some uh, quite oversold uh, is that what's gonna happen well the only real impetus as far as i can tell for that to happen is the 10-year treasury now the 10-year treasury is um, well, it had a good day today. It came down from, you know, the, um, well, maybe not such a big deal, but from 155-ish, and we're down to 152, so that's a good sign, right? Anytime you're moving down. I'm just concerned that we're kind of seeing a little bit of a triangle form here, and so what's going to happen here? Are we going to go up, or are we going to go down? Is this, you know, like some sort of flag pattern? Uh, there's obviously a lot of patterns you could probably see with this. My personal opinion is the 10-year treasury, um, I don't know if it matters so much the patterns. We'll have to see what happens and see how it behaves in terms of patterns. My feeling is that it's more of a fundamental thing that, you know, what, what do banks feel about inflation? We had CPI numbers come out, they were pretty positive, and maybe that's what allowed the 10-year to come down, even though so many uh, bonds and uh, treasury notes, I should say, were um, being sold. Uh, nevertheless, it came down. So, I, you know, my perspective, that's pretty good. But it could easily come back up. And if it did come back up, well, what would happen to the stock market? The stock market, people would le take their money out of the stock market. Uh, both, I suppose, uh, not really fear of inflation, but fear of missing out on prime opportunity to buy bonds, which have a more um, definite return on investment, I would say, unless, you know, you're talking about junk bonds, but, you know, serious good bonds, I suppose people know that they're going to get that interest and maybe they prefer that known interest at a maybe slower or lower rate than the stock market. So they might take their money out of, out of the stock market into the bond market and that would deflate the price of the stock market, of course. Okay, so uh, we looked at the 10-year. We obviously see some options here. It could spike up as we're coming out of this triangle or it could go down. Uh, me personally, I told you last time, I'm not so opinionated on which way triangles go. Sometimes they go one way, sometimes they go another. But uh, nevertheless, today we kind of saw this ascending triangle over here. Um, I'll just draw it really quickly. You can see that we kept on making higher lows and kept bumping up the head over here. And so um, even though we're out of the channel, you know, this could easily shoot back up and go really strong into the channel. That is a strong possibility. Interestingly enough, uh, other stocks that we've been looking at, like Tesla, had almost the exact opposite formation they had a descending triangle. Ugh. So I don't know what to make of that, um, where they were having a lot of trouble breaking out. And you can see in post-market, it's obviously um, pushing up a little bit. But like I said, who cares about post-market? Well, we're still on the channel, so that's a good positive for Tesla. It has a lot of room to shoot up here. And it was because of the aftermarket, or rather pre-market, that we had gone from, you know, where uh, almost the same point, it was almost a non-day. We went from 672, let's turn on the extended hours here, went from you know around 672, 673, and it shot up in pre-market to 720-ish. And um, after that, that was, I guess, overbought and the market reacted. And then after it just it took out a lot of steam as we left this channel, or uh, I suppose if I take off the extended hours, we're not quite out, out of the channel, but as we were going towards the bottom of the channel, but that's prime time now to move up in the channel, assuming the S&P 500 cooperates, right? If the S&P 500 goes down, well, 
then that's just the end of this channel. <laughs> It'll pull Tesla down and Tesla will pull the SPY down and vice versa. Um, so that won't be too good. In terms of NVIDIA, which we've been looking at, it's kind of funny to me. It's almost the exact same kind of triangle pattern and in a way, uh, almost the mirror of the S&P 500, which makes me a little nervous because the S&P 500 was kind of ending on more of a positive day than a negative day as far as I could tell. Uh, whereas this is kind of ending, I guess everyone ended kind of at the same spot. So what's the difference, right? Uh, you know, very similar to yesterday. But I think the S&P 500 was up, you know, a few points. And yet here we have the Nvidia down a few points from yesterday, but I suppose it's pretty similar. So what's the difference? And obviously if the S&P 500 pulls Nvidia down, it's just gonna shoot right back in this channel. Um, so, you know, on one hand, we're leaving this channel. That's kind of positive. It's this triangle formation. Maybe that's what we're gonna use to break out. Maybe not. Um, it's a little bit confusing and it's pretty much the exact same formation for Amazon. And so you can see how these three stocks that we've been watching, it's pretty impressive how they were kind of indecisive. It was kind of, I wouldn't say a non-day, but I would say that they really behaved the exact same way because they were all kind of waiting to see what I think, at least this is what I think, they were kind of waiting to see what the S&P 500 was gonna do. And the S&P 500 kind of stalled. It had a great start and then it stalled and it didn't really do much of anything the whole day. And that's kind of what I think these stocks that are part of the S&P 500 kind of thought. So they obviously all have room to move either way. It's not gonna be a surprise if it goes one way or the other. So where am I leaning? Whew, this is a tricky one right now, especially because we finished below, let's get rid of these, uh, this small triangle here. Uh, we finished below this important line or right on it. So <laughs> anything could really happen as far as I can tell. And we're kind of outside the channel. And so that's why I'm saying I would kind of wait maybe for tomorrow and the truth is we might have a false breakout to the positive, but once we at least have even what I would call a false breakout, if you want to call it that, but once we have a breakout to the positive tomorrow, then at the very least, I would feel more confident that we were going positive. Yes, it could be false. And yes, it could just be a trick for people to buy in when they think this channel is going up and then, you know, it gives people an opportunity to sell and, and then it'll come right back down. Yeah, of course, that's always possible, but at least I'd feel more confident. So right now I'm kind of 50-50. Yesterday I was leaning towards a little bit more of the positive. Um, the only reason why I would lean a little bit more to the positive that it's not going to be a false breakout tomorrow is only because we had such good fundamental information. We had lower 10-year note uh, yield. We had positive information about the CPI. So uh, we had the stimulus bill being passed. All those things to me are quote-unquote positive things. Uh, the only problem I have with all that is a lot of that information was kind of before the market closed. <laughs> and yet the market closed down uh, below this line. So what does that mean? What was, why did it close down? If that was great information, why didn't everything shoot up on that? That was actually what I was waiting for. I saw this triangle and I thought everyone was kind of waiting for the information to come out, for the maybe the bill to be passed. They were just, you know, being careful. And um, as each piece of positive information came out, nothing really happened. And so that gives me pause. And so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You know, is it a good thing that, well, tomorrow everyone will kind of talk about it and then they'll know it's a good thing and it'll shoot up? Or no, even with all that good news, it wasn't able to shoot up. And so that's a bad thing because even the smallest, you know, 10 year increase, uh, 10 year note increase, maybe that's enough to spook the market down. Uh, so that's why I'm really 50 50 right now. And like I said, so tomorrow is going to be a really important day. If things um, go in terms of a positive start of the day, that will, to my mind, be a really good sign. Although I did tell you about all the spots, you know, especially 394, which you can see this is a pivot point, right? We started, we went up. Then we had a down day and the next day uh, down. So you can see that it's surrounded. So that's a pretty nice pivot point. That's going to give some resistance, presumably for day traders. Um, so we'll have to see exactly how that goes. But from my perspective, you know, we're, it could really go either way at this point. And so we'll have to see how the morning starts and the mornings tend to be positive. But this is looking, the nice part is it's looking less and less and less like a head and shoulders pattern um, day by day. So that is a really good option, right? There's the left shoulder, there's the head, there's the right shoulder, right shoulder is already coming up pretty high to the head and we're getting a lot more volume. And so that volume is kind of saying that people are trusting, you know, and really believing in the moves that they're making. They're putting a lot more money in, 
uh, or I suppose taking money up. But since we're moving up in generally, even though today was pretty much a doji day, right? Uh, it, it both started and ended in the same spot. Now, the only reason it probably started so high was because the market jumped so high in pre-market and aftermarket. So it looks like a doji. I'm not sure if I, you know, I don't know if I classify that as a doji or not. But uh, either way, <laughs> that's the way it looks on the chart as a doji. Uh, I never, I sometimes never know exactly, you know, you let me know if you think that's really a doji or not, because really it should have started over here and finished positive. Uh, but what I will say is I had told you yesterday that we really wanted kind of a confirming day and we don't really even have one still. Why? Because technically this is a doji. And yes, we did end higher, but we kind of started at the same level. We went up, we went down. It kind of, um, at least during the market trading um, in terms of that start point, it kind of was indecisive. And so a doji day is really not a confirming day. And so we're really going to need to maybe not have two confirming days, which is not great because we kind of ruined this confirming day, which I was willing to overlook. I was willing to overlook because as much as there was also a huge gap up here, um, we still finished in the positive and I thought that it was stronger. And I, you know, I was willing to wait to see today. If we had a really nice, strong day today, then I'd say, well, maybe we'll call this a good day. And even though that's pushing it and a confirming day, but now we kind of ruined that whole thing with a doji. So now for sure, there's a lot of, as far as I can tell, I feel like a lot of indecision in the market because the market in very short time moved down here. Um, so what in the world is going to happen tomorrow? Who knows? What I will say, the one positive thing is... We did have a little bit more buying pressure, a little bit less selling pressure. And so we're seeing that red line, that trend indicator that we were going down. It's it's looking like if we have a positive day tomorrow, that's going to be a signal to buy into the market. And that's why I say if tomorrow starts off in a really positive light, well, maybe that'll be enough to show people, especially using this indicator, but even just people who uh, this indicator kind of gives you an intuitive sense that, hey, we have kind of broken that tr negative trend that we've going through this whole time. We're kind of, even with a doji, in the positive terrain, right? The doji at least ended above the previous day. And so you're kind of seeing this kind of positive movement. Um, and, you know, if, if the Obviously, if these lines cross dramatically and so the selling pressure really comes down and the buying pressure goes up and there's some nice distance like you can see over here, that's a really good sign. So over here, you saw this distance and, you know, you remember what happened the past week or so of how far it moved down. So, you know, it's still a little bit up in the air. Obviously, the buying pressure could go away. The selling pressure could go up. This trend could continue as a negative trend. And yeah, there was just a blip um, in the middle of this negative downward trend. But nevertheless, we're looking kind of positive for the moment as far as that's t being told. And in terms of the overbought, oversold, yeah, we're just kind of right in the middle here. We're at a 41, not a big deal. We go, we have a lot more room to go in terms of the positive. Um, and so I feel bad saying it's an indecisive moment, but I really, at this point yesterday, I was willing to lay it on the line, you know, I'll put all my chips out. But right now I have no idea. And um yeah, we're within shooting distance of that 403 number, you know, really close, but there's a lot of stuff to get through first. And so, like I said, what's really going to matter tomorrow, uh, first of all, tomorrow's going to be a really important trading day where we go tomorrow. Uh, if we go up, that's more positive, obviously, down, obviously negative. But if it the start of the day also, do we have enough room to really push through some of these uh, lines here? And um, especially, but especially this line, that's that's going to be the most important line. So definitely draw these types of lines if you haven't already, uh, or at least keep them in mind, um, this peak over here. And we had a little bit of a peak over here, which I'm sure will give a little bit of resistance, but hopefully not so much. This one, I would assume, gives more resistance. But if those don't give resistance, that, well, that's a great sign, obviously, and we're you know on our way. Um, okay, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you'll subscribe to the market updates, and uh, you know we'll get into the 10Ks quite a bit. And uh, hopefully we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully to be a good day and people will do well no matter which direction you're trading. Hopefully there's a trade for everyone and um, hopefully everyone uh, does well. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know where you think the market's going. Thanks so much for watching.